Okay, 6.4, the triangle mid-segment theorem. So before we get into mid-segments of triangles, um, I want to talk about medians for a second. Okay, on this first uh, diagram here, segment AB right there is the median of this triangle. Okay, and this connects um, a vertex. It's I say the vertex here, but it could be any vertex, to the um, opposite midpoint. And I didn't leave myself enough space here, but that's okay. Midpoint. Okay, so that would have point B there would have to be a midpoint. Okay, so that's a median. It really doesn't have much to do with this section. I'm just talking about it because medians often get confused with mid, mid segments. That's uh, what I've noticed over the years. Okay, so this is a mid segment and um, it's going to connect any two midpoints. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be the two that I've got marked here. Any two, um, any two midpoints, and then you've got a midsegment. So this is a midsegment. Points A and B are both midpoints. Okay. So just don't get those confused. Um, so this section is uh, has to do obviously with midsegments. Okay. All right. So let's get to the triangle midsegment theorem. Okay. Um, so the first thing you want to know about a um, mid-segment is that it is going to be parallel to one side. So if I go back up to this diagram, that's going to be true, okay? Um, every time, it just always works out like that, okay? Um, so it's pretty obvious what side it's going to be parallel to, okay? And the other thing you'd want to know about this is that the um, the um, the mid segment is going to be twice the length? Sorry, got it the wrong way. The mid segment is going to be half um, the length of the side that it's parallel to. Okay, so if this is um, x, then this segment is going to have a length of two x. Okay. So those are the two important things. One, that you get the parallel sides, and two, that it's a one to two relationship with um, the mid-segment and the side that it's parallel to. Okay, all right. Sorry, I switched around my wording there. Okay, so let's get to an example. So let's use the uh, mid-segment theorem here that says solve for x, y, and z. So this has three different mid-segments in this diagram here, and when you do that, you get this uh, kind of triforce looking thing, okay? Um, and um, what we can do is use any of the um, any of the mid segments. I'm just picking out that one, and then I know the side that's parallel to that, which would be this one, is going to be twice that. So if this is two, then this whole length is four. And since this is a midpoint, well, now I can say y plus y is going to equal four. And so it's going to be 2, right? Y is going to equal 2. Okay. And it actually also always works out like that. If this is 2, then half of the side that is parallel to is going to be 2. Okay. And we can do the same kind of thing with the, uh, with the other two sides. Just get a different color here. So if this is 4, this is going to be 8. And then x plus x is 8, 2x equals 8, so that means x would equal 4. Okay, and same kind of thing again with this. And, oh, I forgot there was a, there's a piece of given information that's not in my diagram. I'll add it to the, I'll make sure it's in the one. This was supposed to say that this is 6 units all the way across. And then we're going to find z. Okay. So um, if you look at the relationship between those two, z should be half of six. So z is going to equal three. I'll just put that down here. Okay. All right. So moving on to this next example. This is a little more complicated, but not really. Um, 
it's just that we've got some expressions and not just uh, not just variables and and uh, integers. Okay, so hey, this is there's two midpoints that are connected, right? So this is a mid segment, so we can use the triangle mid segment theorem, which says that if I take um, if I take this side and double it, so let me think about that. If I double x plus three, then that's two times the quantity x plus three. So now I've got two different expressions, so I can say 2 times x plus 3 is going to equal 4x minus 10. I'll do my work up here. 2 times the quantity x plus 3 equals 4x minus 10. Okay. And now I should be able to solve for x, so I'm going to first distribute the 2, or you could divide the whole equation by 2, that would work as well. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides so that I can combine the x terms. Add 10. And divide by 2. And then x equals 8. All right, and then part two of this, or part B, um, says find the length of AB. Well, I've got two different expressions I can choose from. I'll just use 4x minus 10. So AB equals 4x minus 10. And now I've solved for x already, so I'll just plug in 8 right there. 32 minus 8, sorry, 32 minus 10 which is 22 units and for the length of AB. Okay. All right, so next problem, we're gonna move to a coordinate plane. Okay. And um, we've got some different things we need to do. Um, so this says, first find the midpoint of AC. Okay, this didn't print out very well, but this is supposed to be a negative one. I can see that's supposed to be the point. And it's a negative right there as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to find um, the midpoint of AC. Okay, now I don't know if you can see the grid. I can actually kind of just see it's going to be right there because if you think about the slope, down one to the right three puts me right there, down one to the right three again. But we can also use the midpoint formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. My midpoint of AC, I'm going to average the X's, and then I'll average the Y's. So let's see, that's going to be positive 2 over 2, and 0 over 2. And zero divided by anything is zero. So hey, the midpoint then is going to be the point one zero. And there's the midpoint of AC. Okay, part A complete. All right, part B, find the midpoint of BC. Okay, again, I can kind of see if you have the grid where that's going to end up. I'm pretty sure it's going to be there, but let's go ahead and use the uh, midpoint formula again. I'll average my x's here, two and four. And then I'll average the y's, which is 5 and negative 1. And that midpoint is going to be the point 3, 2. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and put those coordinates in the, in the picture so I have them if I need them. Okay. Um, oh, and it said to label the first one D. So this is the point D. Okay. And this was the point E. All right. And now next up, I'm supposed to verify that AB is parallel to DE. Well, I don't have DE drawn yet, but now I do, right? So I want to show that these are par parallel. So the question is kind of telling us they're parallel, but let's uh, make sure that is correct. Well, we can use the slope formula on both of them, right? So to verify this, I can show that the slope of AB, let's see, I'm going to use the slope formula. 
So I'm subtracting the y's in the numerator, 5 minus 1. I'm subtracting the x's, 2 minus negative 2, in the denominator. So I've got a slope of 1, which makes sense if you look at the, the picture, because I'm going up one to the right one, up one to the right one, right? So that makes sense for my slope there. And now let's verify this. So, you know, you might be able to look at the diagram and tell they have the same slope, but you'd still want to verify it by showing what the slopes are, not just by saying, oh, I can see the slopes are the same. That doesn't count as verifying. We're verifying this mathematically using the slope formula. Okay, so same thing again. I'm going to look at my y's, 2 minus 0, and then my x's, 3 minus 1. Um, and then I've got 2 over 2. And hey, look at that. They both have the same slope. So I'm going to go ahead and call that verified. I've show, I showed they both have the same slope. So that means they are parallel. OK, now I want to verify that these have the, um, that the, the other part of the midpoint formula, because this is a mid-segment, right? I want to verify the other part, which says that you know if I double the mid-segment, it's going to be the same as the length of the uh, segment that it's parallel to. OK. So what I need to do is find the length of these two segments. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're using a lot of these uh, formulas that we keep using all the time. So let's look at DE. I'm going to use the distance formula here. Okay, there's the distance formula in case you forgot it. All right, let's take a look. So DE for my x's, I'm going to do 3 minus 1, square that. For my y's, 2 minus 0, square that. Okay, I'll, whoops, I'm off screen there. Okay, and then I'll do the exponents, then the addition. Okay. I'm just going to leave this like this for the time being, okay? And then let's tr see what we get when um, we look at A, B, okay? Okay, so I'm not going to rewrite that formula, but using the same formula, I'm going to subtract the x's for A, B, so 2 minus negative 2 square that difference. For my y's, 5 minus 1 squaring that difference. Okay, so this is going to give me 4 squared plus 4 squared. Okay, and some people are going to look at this and say, wait a second, that's not in a 1 to 2 relationship because, hey, I'd have to quadruple 8 to get 32. And it's true, you do have to quadruple 8 to get 32, but that's not true about the square root of 8 and the square root of 32, okay? So we got two different options here. One of these is to um, rewrite these in simple radical form. So you might remember how to do that. Um, our book hasn't, at this point, introduced that. So if you forgot how to do that, that's okay. Um, so you can use a calculator. It's, um, be careful with the calculator because it's, you know, it's not gonna be totally precise. When I put in the square root of eight, um, I get this decimal, but that decimal would go on forever, right? This is just the, the amount that my calculator is willing to display, okay? And I'm going to try doubling this just so I get that on screen, okay? And then let's look at the square root of 32, and I can see, oh, those decimal approximations. If I do take the square root of 8 and double it, it looks to be the same, okay? Um, if you were to put these in simple radical form, this one would come out to 2 root 2, this one would come out to um, 4 root 2. And if you double 2 root 2, you get 4 root 2. So that's another way you could do that if you're comfortable with simple radical form. But otherwise, you can just check with your calculator. Okay, that's the end of the section. I'll see you next time.